Melissa to Danny Bonaducci. Good evening and welcome to tonight's episode of Paranormal Encyclopedia, which is of course a real big celebration for us all tonight, because this marks our 50th episode here on Hamilton Radio. 50! Yes! 50! Holy God, we actually survived 50 and I didn't kill you yet. Nobody's killed me yet. That alone is a miracle. Well, how do we know that I didn't and then just revived you? Yeah, <laughs> good point. Yes. So folks, we've got a lot of special surprises in store for you tonight. Um, as you may notice from some of the accoutrements on the table, although I think most of it's covered by the TV. Mm. I'm going to do some magic. Baron's going to do some hypnosis. We've got, um, if Brian shows up, he's currently missing in action. Um, he's going to do a reading from one of his books. Mm -hmm. We've got a slew of old guests that are going to be joining us over the course of the evening. Um, a few of them may be surprises because I just uh, sent like, random messages to people to see if they wanted to join us. Like probably to like 20 people uh, asking if they wanted to join us, if they, even if they had the loosest of connections uh, to a paranormal topic. Mm. <laughs> because you know what, there's always there's always an interesting paranormal spin that could easily be turned from anything. anything. Like I said, with celebrities, if nothing else, we can always do EVPs. Oh yes. Famous people's EVP sounds like fun. Or for that better, you know, the I'm a celebrity, get, them out, get me out of here, Haunted House Edition. Oh. <laughs> Can't say I've ever played that version. I think it's doable. There's, mm. there's definitely houses in this country. Oh, yes. I remember one of my favorite uh, actresses had a haunted house that she eventually sold off to Brad Pitt. Cassandra <laughs> ah. Peterson. Ah, Elvira. Yes. Nice. The true mistress of the dark. Okay, before we continue on this whirly gig, because tonight is going to be very free-flowing, yes. um, I want to give out the number because this is mo even more than usual, one of those nights that we encourage people to call in. It's 609-807-2492, 609-807-2492. You will call. Keep in mind that number is through Skype, so if you have somebody who's already on the line and you want to jump in and ask a question to that person or a question in general, don't worry about it. We can take more than one caller at a time. Yep. And it'll um, be fun. And in fact, two weeks ago when we did the one-year anniversary, we had a couple of cases where we had more than one person on the line. Yeah, that was that was beyond awesome. We had three at one point, Arthur, John, and Chuck. And me. And you. Yes, because you had to call in that night. Yeah, unfortunately, but yeah. And uh, <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm going to admit something on air that I don't think I admitted before. There was a lot of whiskey involved in that call. <laughs> of course there was. I'm surprised I kept my sanity during that broadcast. But it was a good broadcast. I kept my... Uh, could you tell? No, I couldn't. Huzzah! It was, we've had a really good run so far. So far. And you want to... Um, we, like, should, we should plug our first sponsor, though. Oh, of course. You want me to do it or you want to do it? I'll do it. Okay, awesome. So we want to give a shout-out to Audible. Um, if you guys go to audibletrial.com slash paranormale, that's audibletrial.com slash paranormal e. You can get a one month free membership. If you don't know what Audible is, it's a huge collection of audiobooks. And we're talking tens of thousands. Oh, yeah. Um, our good friend and, form and prior guest, Dacre Stoker's newest book, Dracul, is on there. Yep, him I and J.D. Barker did yep. a great job. Oh, I've actually book. started delving into it. So it's a good I. book. It's like, oh, Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yes. oh, yeah. It's a real page turner. And it, it's a really interesting, I mean, it's a pre, for those of you who hadn't heard the interviews or seen anything about it, it's a prequel to Dracula about Bram Stoker as a young man, as a child at first, mm -hmm. in fact, interweaving actual history with fiction and things like that. It's, it's, a, it's a good read, and you want to know it, it's a good listen, too, if you get yourself on Audible. Yep. Because they've even got other books, too, that isn't just necessarily on the paranormal. you got stuff from Asimov on there. You've got even resource and reference materials as well, if you want to yep. learn something on the go. Self-help books. Yep, without a doubt. And even my personal favorite that has a tendency to make Kevin here cringe, the entire collection of Anne Rice's works. And Twilight. And, oh, God. Which makes everybody <laughs> cringe. That's the only thing that can, that's your counter-cringe to me. <laughs> the only cure is Clyde Barker. Great, great no choice. No such thing. Fight me. No, I'm not saying that he doesn't exist. I'm saying Clive Barker isn't a cure. Clive Barker is the answer. Clive Barker's got a good degree of cringe in a good way. Oh, yes. I love Just because he has such a fondness for BDSM. So, in case you folks haven't noticed here, we've actually got two folks that we normally don't have behind this side of the desk. Yep. Amisha Campbell, the original producer from back when it was still just a YouTube show. Indeed. And the occasional sidekick. And our current producer... Beth is all have joined us in tonight. 
Uh-huh. Most of you remember me from threatening to hit somebody with a, you know, riding crop. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And, and often uh, intelligent the, comments and additions. Uh-huh. And who the heck are you? <laughs> of course, in case anyone doesn't know, after 50 episodes, I'm Kevin Mears, demonologist, paranormal encyclopedia, paranormal investigator, joined, of course, by... Baron Voltage, a.k.a. Christopher Ryan, a.k.a. Small medium at Large, a.k.a. I'm going to hypnotize you all into remembering me so that this way you will call into the show. And subscribing. <laughs> and subscribing and liking. Yes. You will. <laughs> or you will suddenly feel an itch behind your eyeball that you can't quite reach for Don't a couple of hours. That? Oh, yes. You see, that's, that's something you want to know. That's a good lead-in. We were originally trying to figure out what would be a great overarching topic for everything. And Kevin came up with the idea, come up with some quirky ideas and stuff that we could talk about in regards to our own respective fields. <laughs> so I'm going to say some of the fun stuff I love to do people when I got them tranced out. And you I'm going to tell some of the goofier stories about ghost hunting. Oh, ghost hunting and maybe even some of the uh, faux magic tricks oh, yeah. that ended up freaking falling flat on their faces. There's, well, there's also some, there's the magic trick that stopped a war. Oh, yeah, there you go. And, and some other funny magic stories, certainly. Yeah. And Meow Meow over there can tell us some funny cat stories. Thank you, Madam <laughs> Meow Mix. <laughs> <laughs> and Beth being our uh, resident uh, famousologiosis mademoiselle. And cat herder. Don't forget to say uh, uh, Definitely cat a cat herder. herder. <laughs> all of them. Yep. There Every you go. single one of them. Every single time. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not denying this at all. She's Queen you know. Cat, the cat herder. Could tell us some rather funny stuff here. So, Kevin, you want to start us off, or you want to play uh, whose turn is it roulette? I'll start us off with a funny ghost. With there a we go. Funny magic story. Awesome. We like funny magic stories. So, there's an stories incident in the early 1900s mm-hmm. where people, a bunch of magicians all got a letter about how somebody was going to do an outdoor, out on the streets of New York, levitation without wires. Damn you, David Blaine. What the frick were you oh, doing this was back years in the before, 1900s? Yeah, years before <laughs> Blaine or anything like that. And okay. everybody got real excited. They all were given a spot to meet at midnight. Mm-hmm. And one of them was very incensed because he was famous for doing a wireless levitation. It's like, who dares do my bit? So they go, all go out there. It turns midnight. And they're all staring at each other and staring at each other. And one of them goes, you know, it's after midnight. You do realize what today is. It was April 1st. <laughs> well played to the turn of the century troll. You have done well. The true and awesome April Fools to what us all. To a bunch of magicians. <laughs> and you think magicians are the biggest pranksters of all. They oh, make God a living yes. off of it. It's, just, <laughs> it's not at anybody's expense. It's just usually at the expense of somebody's ignorance. But even mm. then, they're entertained. <laughs> the hell that's you want to i mean i I give plenty of props to like i know i mentioned him before but david blaine all right some of the stuff that he does is okay yeah that's kind of awesome but then some of the stuff is like he has to be trolling people for instance i'm gonna i'm gonna freeze myself into a block okay what's the magic I'm going to see how long I can do this in New York without anybody throwing something at me. <laughs> Which is a pretty good trick all by itself. I'm Let's saying, it. you know, I mean, come on. You want to impress me? Have the ice block remain intact over a volcano. <laughs> then I'll be impressed. Also, also, Emilio Diaz, who says, hi, guys. Emil here. Hope all is going well. Also says, lo, 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 ultimate, ni- oh, awesome 19th century trolling for the win. Yes. <laughs> now, all right. Here, I'll tell a funny hypnosis story, yes. and then I'll talk about some of the ways I torment people with it. <laughs> um, the guy that actually invented it, Franz Mesmer, he didn't invent it. He just figured out that, oh, cool, I can actually do some really cool stuff with this. He originally came up with the idea of it through animal magnetism. Oh, lords. Yeah. You want to talk about a hokey pseudoscience and a half. He actually believed that people in some way, shape, or form could easily, like... I, I can't even explain it with a straight face. They basically, you know, had energy animate, yep. emanating out of parts of their body like magnetism, yeah, except exactly. not detectable like magnetism. And the thing is, is that he, since he considered all humans to basically be animals, since the term animal magnetism, and then figured, oh, there's some connection to that with the way that the human mind works. Uh, let me do a small little bit about that when I present this to the freaking College of Vienna. Was it? I know. Eventually, you wound up. Presenting it to a yeah. team of scientists that included Benjamin Franklin himself. Yeah. 
And Benny Franken was pretty convinced on the hypnosis bit, but not necessarily animal Yeah, magnetism. he called bullshit on the magnetism. Yeah, definitely without a doubt. But then he realized, wait a minute, the hypnosis bit actually, like, uh, well, he called it mesmerism. Well, eventually it was called mesmerism, but he realized that everybody seemed to really enjoy that bit. I got to do that bit again and mm. dig into more into it, and next thing you know, we end up with hypnosis. And then you get the funny crap I could do to people, in particular. Kevin, Tom? we got a call. Yeah, put him through. Holy oh, Karen. Who do we have? Hello, you're live on the air. Hey, it's Karen from New Jersey Ghost Organization. Hey, Karen, good to have you on. Kevin. Called it. First and victim I think of the Brian night. might just have shown up. Did we get Brian? Nope. No, we did not get Brian. Ruben. Hey, Ruben. Hello, the Ruben. <laughs> how are you doing, Karen? Good, how are you? Good. So what have you been up to of late? Thank you. Have a, you have a stellar show. Oh, thank you. From thank so, you. Uh, Calling in the field, that means a great deal to me. Indeed. Oh. Well, listen, you've earned it. Thank you. So have you been up to anything new and exciting lately? Well, we started our ghost walk in, uh, in my town, in East Brunswick. Hey. And, um, you know, and of course, you know, we're in Jersey. So, um, and it's, you know, just a few weeks till Halloween. So, like I said, we started our ghost walk uh, for the community. And... This year, the money goes to the fire department, and it also uh, goes to one of the animal rescues in town. Oh, so nice. So we're taking up um, some food for cats and dogs and supplies and things like that. So, yeah, we've been pretty busy. Wow. I think we need to go check that out at some point. Yes, and we encourage all of our well, listeners. Well, every Saturday night yeah. in October, 7.30. And it's for um, good, two good causes. on Facebook on EB Ghost Walk. And uh, it's on our um, Instagram. I think you'll find it. And uh, yeah, we've been busy. It's usually in all the newspapers. So, well, there you, go. you know, any of the local papers, uh, the Home News Tribune, uh, the local Sentinel. Um, it's been all over. Um, there's, a, I think it's uh, called Ghost Ghost Tour Bookings.com. They're in Australia. So mm. we've been just advertised internationally now. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember Brian and I meeting you at your convention last year, and I'm really yeah, glad to yeah, see things expo, working out yeah, well for you. Expo. So, yeah, listeners so. and viewers, yeah. certainly check yeah. it out. <laughs> Definitely, without a doubt. Or hey, you it's a will. Ghost tour for a worthy cause. Yes, that's and my oh, favorite part. Absolutely, absolutely. Sometimes it goes to the museum down there. We try to keep it in the village. It's just a little sleepy village uh, that was established in 1634. Oh, wow. So there's a lot of uh, haunted history down there. Well, that's a number to play in the pick for, 1634. Yeah, yeah, right. Straight in box. Beats my hometown yeah, by 60 so. years in terms of how old it is. Hey, there you go. Because I come from New Hope, Pennsylvania, which is 1700 even. Yeah, there uh, that's, yeah that's, uh, New Hope's pretty haunted as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if there's any hauntings in Pottstown beyond just my house. Uh, we, there's we hauntings just, everywhere. Uh, we were just uh, advising somebody, a client, out in Lancaster, PA. Ah, uh. That's uh, Native American Indian territory. Oh, yeah. Here. Oh, yeah. Horse and buggy land. I was going to say, and the Amish and That's the true. Pennsylvania Dutch That's as well. Yeah. Those are people that take a long look at hypnosis and try to kill you for <laughs> it. <laughs> I was going to say, with the Pennsylvania Dutch as well, you get into a lot of interesting traditions with magic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're doing magic tonight, right? Well, I, I was actually meaning I'm going to be doing stage magic. I meant actual traditional ha magic magic, you know, the occult wow. stuff. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because the... um. Hexes that they put on the barns. Yep. But they're, they, powwow, that's the name of the tradition. Yeah, there's a whole magical hey. tradition among the Pennsylvania Dutch known as powwow that incorporates the hex signs everybody knows from the barns and a bunch of other root traditions from that area. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, PA is loaded with that kind of stuff. It's, it's an oh, awesome yeah. place to live. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I miss being from in PA. And <laughs> I'm okay with being in PA now. <laughs> kind of, you want it kind of like adds to the appreciation of dr me driving all the way out here just to, just to make fun of you. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. There you go. <laughs> oh, he We're loves really it. Happy in Jersey. It's actually Poor Kevin. But anyway, that... listen, I'm going to sign off okay. because I have a meeting to go to, and uh, it's work in the morning. So. Thank you so much for calling in. And our hats anyway, off to you well, for listen, doing the awesome. Happy anniversary. You deserve you. it. It's a great show, and uh, I really appreciate. Any of the time that you've given us in the past. You're so always welcome. You were a great enjoy guest. Enjoy it. Enjoy it, guys. Indeed. Okay. Thank you. So that was Karen right. Kimmel Tipper, one of the very first guests we had on, actually. Oh, rock Sweet. on. 
So it's it's fitting to have her as the first guest of, of the special guests of tonight. Because she was our first. That's I'm not right. sure if she was the very first, but she was among the first. And you know what? The thing is, is that she noted a very good cause, which means, hey, go yeah. out there, help her out, hook her up. You want to know what? It goes to a good cause it's over It's two here. good causes. Because two it's an of animal them. rescue and a fire department. And the fire department, which are known to rescue animals from trees, too. Yep. And Part burning buildings. And, and burning they both buildings. need money. They both always need money. Oh, yeah. Especially public services nowadays. Oh, yeah. Oh, mm -mm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -mm. yeah. It's like I would have happily promoted her ghost walk anyway because she's an awesome person. Mm -hmm. and I support what she does. But it's like, oh, wait, it's a ghost walk for charity. We're bringing that up Instant every other show win. in this month. Yes. Instant <laughs> win. Mm -hmm. All right. Where was I? Um, you were talking about your, your favorite trick and uh, specifically about how Ben Franklin was intrigued by hypnosis. Oh, yes. So that's where you finished. Oh, well, no, that's where I finished with yeah. uh, Benny, but then I started to go into how I, was, how I can really do some evil. Yeah. <laughs> um, some of the more twisted things that I've done, the mm -hmm. itch behind the eyeball was certainly one of them, and I can <laughs> teach people how to do this. It's fun. I promise. <laughs> um, there's also the uh, consistent feeling like you just tried to sneeze but couldn't. <laughs> or the wandering itch, oh, where God. every single time you scratch, you, you think you bad. scratched where it itched, but it isn't alleviating this itch. Um, my other personal favorite screws with a person's balance, where every single time they take a step, they feel like they just took a step mm -hmm. down a staircase and forgot there was another step. <laughs> or oh, what's worse, they thought there was another step. You ever do that? Try and take another step that didn't exist, and you almost put your fo foot through the floor? <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's always fun. You know, and that's just, you know, some of the minimal. And then you've got the downright demonic, where I install Siri in a person's head. Oh. <laughs> and put songs on loop. And videos on loop. You ever get Rick rolled by your own brain? <laughs> it's Where's Brian? He's the one who volunteered to be hypnotized. <laughs> I think that's the reason why he isn't here. He knew I'd do it, too. Yeah. That's what it is. It's like, I was thinking about volunteering. Now, for some reason, I'm having second thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Well, who knows? Maybe I hypnotized him into thinking that it would be a good idea to volunteer. And now he finally snapped out of it. Damn could it. be. He did hang out with me, like, for a while last, <laughs> like, two weeks ago. But probably where he got the idea. He was alone with me for a little bit. Oh, dear. There what you go. What did you do to, to my other co-host? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm innocent. That's even more sounds even more suspicious. Okay, I'm innocent. Where's my lawyer? <laughs> this isn't a trial, you don't get a lawyer. I demand a lawyer. Where's my phone call? <laughs> <laughs> nope. But you know, I mean, as with all things that could be downright evil and hypno hypnotic, some of the fun stuff that I've done that's not evil, but it's just downright cool. Like making water taste like vodka. <laughs> but what's even more twisted is is that when you drink it you actually do get drunk. Yes. You like that cranberry juice? What if it was suddenly wine? How very Jesus-like of me. That's a very Christian thing to do. I'm doing my duty for Christmas. I'm making everybody's cranberry juice turn to red wine. Enjoy! Red, red wine. You make you feel You're so, so fine. fine. <laughs> yes. But, you know, I mean, mm. other than that kind of, like, you know, cruddy up stuff and fun stuff, though, I do enjoy touring the, uh, the uh, convention circuit. Oh, yes. We both like those. Oh, yes. You know, hypnosis has really brought a lot to me in that regard and blessed me in so many different Which ways. Which reminds me, I need to make a clarification. So last week I had mentioned that I was going to be performing at mm. the Halloween and the Catskills events. Yeah. That is incorrect. It was a miscommunication. Not placing blame on anybody, but I won't be there. Mm. Oh, well. <laughs> you know, I'm sure they'll miss you, and uh, yeah. if they don't, then oh, well. that's them. You know, I mean, hey. But, you know, I mean, there are a number of conventions that are going to be coming up, you know, within the year. Oh, yeah. That maybe be I'll funny. be making appearances at. I might even be making an appearance at PARF. Cool. Who knows? So but I found another fun story. Oh, you got fun story. I like fun story. It combines both the occult and this type of magic. Ooh. So this comes from, um, I want to say the 19th, yeah, 19th century. Again, now you're going back even more 100 years. Yes. So the French were having issues in Algeria with the local tribes. We, oui, as we usually um, did. A war, basically, they're afraid a war is about to break out. And part of the problem they're having is that the, Al the local Algerian tribes have shamans. They're, they're very oh, yeah. convinced the power of their, sham their shamans. So the, the French decide to go to their greatest magician, magician and scientist Robert Houdin. 
Oh, wow, we, yes. I love this man. Robert Houdin was a really cool individual. In fact, yeah, if the name sounds familiar, it's because Houdini took his name in honor of Houdin. May we? So, Houdin, being a scientist, develops what's famously, a trick known as famously as the light and heavy box. Mm. It's a box not much bigger than this. It seems to be made out of wood. He sets it down, brings out an English schoolgirl, little kid, you know, six, seven, eight, maybe eight years old tops. Uh -huh. Kid picks up the box, waves it around, sets it down. Goes to the Algerian people, invites their strongest warrior to come forward. Zaps him with his magical powers. Warrior can't make the box budge. Uh -huh. Warrior steps away. Little girl can pick it up easy as can be. Mm. How peculiar. Um, I do know how it was done. I will not, uh, Magician's Code, I'm not going to say. But it is a common technique used in almost every house in the, in, in the world today. Mm. It's a matter, it is, remember, he wasn't just a magician, he was a scientist. Huzzah. Leverage. And it stopped the war. There was no combat between the two sides because the Algerian people were freaked out. It's like, how could we possibly defeat the superior magic? Exactly. Sometimes <laughs> the better gimmick is what wins. Yep. And I love it. There's a whole series with that as well with the Second World War where the, the English used magicians. The oh. not telegraph writers. <laughs> There's a one magician. There's a movie on this on Netflix, if anybody's interested, about the, <clears> team, <throat> the team of magicians that helped the British war, as British SIS and the war effort by doing things like, it was, um, there's the famous story of the fake army. Mm. The, how the British built an army, and the Americans, because at this point the Americans had entered the war. This was part of the preparations for D-Day. But they built an army out of balsa wood and canvas. Ah, yes. <laughs> and then they set up a radio tower uh-huh you know send and then said general Patton at the time he was a three you know a three-star general this is before he led d-day to go do a bunch of parades and give a bunch of speeches and convinced the germans that they were going that the allies were going to land at the beaches of calais mm -hmm. instead of the beaches of normandy in fact we know from german records that hitler thought was convinced that the attack on normandy was a ruse that the main force that was going to attack Calais, they devoted most of their forces, all of their artillery, to defending the wrong beach. Yeah, because most of the thing is, is that Calais is a lot closer to the English coast than Normandy. Yep. He also, at one point, mostly, I think, for fun, convinced the Brit Germans that the English had developed a new superior form of sonar that could detect all German subs unless they were painted a specific color and got the Germans to completely repaint their sub fleet. Hmm. The only productive thing I could think it did was waste a bunch of money and waste you know, the subs being out of service. Interesting. And a bunch of other things. Magic and, and the paranormal, too, have more of an influence on history than people think. Another good story on the paranormal side of things, Dante Alighieri, his most famous work, The Divine Comedy. My favorite. It, it, well, parts of it were published while he was still alive, the complete version was thought lost when he died. Mm. His son had a dream of Dante's ghost coming to him and showing him a specific spot in Dante's study. And in the morning, the son went there and looked in that spot and found a, a hidden cubby and found the completed manuscript. Mm. What about that? I'll tell you later. Okay. Well, I mean, when it comes to Dante, and it comes to the paranormal, and it comes to inserted <laughs> fan fiction, and we were talking about Twilight earlier. Uh, let's avoid Twilight like the plague. <laughs> you are not hitting me done. with that. No. <laughs> I will he make that. It, I will no. make that feel like not only is it made of asbestos, but as heavy as a brick. <laughs> you know I can do it. She'll go down cuddling the thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's hers. Yes. You don't take that from her. I'll sprinkle <laughs> it with catnip. I'll make it smell like catnip. Sniff. Yes. So we're coming up on the hour. I'm going to give out the number are again. We? Yes. Wow. Six no. or half, half, hour. Hour. half hour. What are you talking about? I was about, about to say you made me go wait. in the full what? seven. <laughs> I meant. Whack. Don't mind me. Great time. Time flies when you're having fun. 
So yes. remember, if you want to call in, if you're one of the plan people, if you're somebody else who likes the show who wants to call in, if you think we're a bunch of crazy people and you want to make fun of us, that's okay to call in too. Yeah, go ahead. 609-807-2492. 609-807-2492. The number is down at the bottom of your screen. Um, we welcome people to call in, critical or otherwise. Come on. Break the boys. <laughs> yeah. Or try. Actually, I'm you know what? Break. that would be something interesting to try and pull off. See if they could actually make either one of us bust out laughing. Because I can go stone-faced. I can, but they, it take, usually takes more prep work. They'll probably break me faster than you. Yeah. I'm also in a really giggly mood. Yeah. And I would probably break under a feather. Uh, you break sneeze, very easily. You break. <laughs> See, there you go. Already won. Beth, I think, could keep a poker face. She could try. I don't know. We, we did that laugh challenge a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you busted out laughing. Enough said. You broke I first. I bet you could keep them longer than Demisha, though. Yeah, she would definitely outlast Amisha. She would outlast you. I think it'd be me and her head to head, more or less. The only thing I have to do is just say, "Call that. in and find out." Yes. <laughs> Try and make us laugh. See what happens next on Paranormal Encyclopedia: <laughs> The Paranormal Phenomenon of Beth Laughing. <laughs> See? I'm gonna dropkick you. <laughs> <laughs> not in that dress. You better not. Hey, dress. <clears throat> And you see where the magic is. <laughs> there it is. I so you need a drum for that. <laughs> oh, please. It Almost. Works. Yes. <laughs> so you have, you has props. Yes, and I'm going to do magic. <clears throat> Build you... up. Build up. <laughs> Build up. <laughs> yes. And I has my hat. Yes. I think I win. <laughs> I mean. Yes, but maybe. can you put a sword through her throat without killing her? No, but I can look cool as hell with it. But I can put the sword through her hat, throat without killing her. And consensually. Let's emphasize. Consensually. consensually. Always consensual. I can make her feel like she's consensual. going on the electric chair with this thing. Also consensually. Of course. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> hypnosis. 100% consensual. Yep. It better be. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> I win. So I think it's time for a funny ghost story. Yes, I like funny ghost stories. Let's hear it. Um, I think I've told this one before, but it's always worth repeating. Mm. So, a friend of mine, in, or no, I'll, I'll save that one. I'll do another one. I don't think I've told this recently. Mm. Um, my mentor, Lou, gets a call from this family, the, this, these two women, I should say, mm -hmm. in the Poconos area of Pennsylvania. It's a good two and a half hour drive to get there, yep. and a two and a half hour drive to get back. The Poconos is two and a half hours away from everything. Pretty much. But it's gorgeous up there. Except things that's even further from. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's like yeah, the minimum is two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. So, and this woman's talking about your full-on, like, poltergeist movie stuff. Objects flying around, horrible vo demonic voices, claw marks, bite marks. You know, house totally destroyed. And he gets up there, and this house is in ruins. Ooh. It looks like it's got a poltergeist. It's got claw marks on the furniture, bite marks on the furniture. But Lou, Lou wasn't say any more psychic than I am, but you do, the, do what we do long enough, you get a feel for a place, and you can tell if a place has a spook, spook in it. And this place ain't sending off any bells. Oh, boy, here we so go. So he's sitting and he's talking to these two women, and these two women are crazier than a box of Fruit Loops, mm. talking about um, how there are these defenders of time and space that appear as koalas with military helmets on. Um... And all this other goofy, some of it's new agey, some of it's, I don't, I don't know where you get koala, koalas and army helmets. I really don't. Um, I don't even know if there's cartoons of this. You send them to Australia first. And yeah. give them fosters. Mm -hmm. They will wear helmets. Yeah, point. But, um. And Vegemite sandwiches. Finally, he, she pulls out really? an audio recorder. Uh-huh. And swears she has EVP proof you know, of the spirit voices and plays it and granted it sounded really weird like this but again Lou was the king of EVP he got it everywhere this isn't sounding like EVP it sounded like somebody that took 36 volume with vodka it sounded like what it was it's somebody that took the the recorder and flicked it on the slow play so when he flicks it back to regular play and hits play it's the woman in question 
screaming at the actual cause of the haunting her two large, extremely active dogs. Dogs have anxiety. You leave the dogs home alone, they destroy your house. They bite and chew, you know, chew and claw at your furniture. The kicker being, the woman did not accept this explanation. Her precious puppies could never do that. Thanks, fuck you. Pardon my language, but... Yeah. That... All right. I'm going to state this. It's going to be probably what's going to get me hate mail. <laughs> if you anthropomorphize your domestic animals in belief that they have personalities that are incapable of evil and destruction, I will invite you to a room and throw one of my cats in there. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Satan cat? It is Satan cat, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, Satan cat's stories. redundant. Cats are all evil. Uh, 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 no. Some are sweet. They just don't know how to control their evil. Satan cat. That, for those that don't know, I live in a house with five cats. Okay? I actually came up with names for them uh, that are just endearing as heck. From Stabby to Grumpy to Satan cat to Sleepy. And... Satan Cat in particular, her actual name is Sophie, has permanent half-moon eyes. Unless she likes you, then Lord help you. Because Sophie does not know, actually no. I am convinced she does know how to retract her claws. She just chooses not to. That's normal. If you're within close proximity to her, you're going to need a transfusion. Because she will let you know that you're in close proximity to her and you're invading her personal space. Unfortunately, her personal space is about a good six to seven foot radius around her. Sounds like an ordinary cat. And she moves no. around. Okay, maybe a little meaner than an ordinary cat. Well, that's just that she's not mean. She's purposely, she's calculating. <laughs> mean is just blind rage. No, Sophie actually knows what she's doing. Because she'll purposely be cute to lure you in. Thinking, ooh, she wants tummy rubs. You go to give tummy rubs, and you're off to the hospital getting three or four bags of O-Neg. Because guess what? You just tried to give tummy rubs to Satan. To be fair, unless the kitten is used to getting tummy rubs as a baby, and as they're growing up, that's a frickin' trap. But my, that's just it. My girlfriend could give her tummy rubs, no problem. That's her human. Clearly. She has the permission. She has the consent. Well, I'm just thinking of the cat at Amisha's house that will come by Amisha or, cat, or her sister cat or her parents to get rubs for a tenth of a second and then just walk Oh, we got a call. Away. Oh, Yay. probably Chuck because he was going to call in around seven. Hey, how you doing? Good. Hey, oh, John. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, Yay. too. Yay. <laughs> For those that don't know, who we've got on the phone is, if you care to introduce yourself, or do you, would you rather Kevin does it? <laughs> why, don't you let, why don't you let Kevin, Kevin introduce me? There you go. Okay, so unless I'm having an out-of-body experience, this is our friend John French. Yes! Um, who is an excellent writer, does paranormal fiction, and I believe you do detective fiction as well. Do you not, John? Right, I started off doing de uh, detective fiction, and then... Um, CJ got me involved in the Zarnak, Zarnak anthology, mm -hmm. and I was the only one in the anthology who did not write a mythos tale. I went straight vampire. <laughs> Always a good choice. And then, and then Vince Sneed, um, Vince Sneed asked me, uh, "Can you write a zombie story?" Well, I hadn't been writing that long, but I knew the answer was yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when somebody asks you for a zombie story, the answer is always yes. Not for me. Yeah, well, I, I found <laughs> as, a, as a short story writer, um, the editor asked you, can you write such and such? Your first answer is always yes. Mm. Yeah, especially then. That's essentially saying that that's, that's <laughs> saying otherwise is like saying when getting the question, are you a god, saying no. <laughs> yeah, if somebody right. asks you if Nothing you are a god... Nothing good can come out of saying no. You say <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, I'm glad you called in, because I was... Do we got you for a few, or do you have to run? Oh, no, I, you got me for a few. Oh, awesome. sweet. Okay. 
This was something that I was hoping that you would call in for. It was um, what I mentioned earlier just before the show started. Oh, that. Are you familiar with Freddy Krueger? Freddy Krueger? Yes. Um, heard of him. I think I watched one of the movies. Okay. <laughs> I asked Kevin what he figured Freddy was in regards to what sort of paranormal entity he was. And then I was thinking to myself, the murders that he was sort of linked to one way or the other, okay, throughout all of his films, okay, people basically being slashed left and right. You being as a detective, how would you interpret these paranormal murders with a lens from a real eye? That's an interesting question. All right. Well... Since now, Freddy Krueger goes after people in the dreams, right? That is correct. Yes. Yep. Okay, so there probably isn't any forensic evidence that would lead a regular uh, crime scene investigator to um, or detective to suspect that mm. somebody, the people, are getting killed in their dreams. Well, now, the kick in, is mm -hmm. in the movies. Mm -hmm. Are there? Physical wounds on the body? Or yes, they there is. Dead Whatever happens no in the dream happens to them the physically in reality. And the thing is, is that they all seem to center around in the same geographical location that Kruger used to stalk when he was still alive. And the murders are under the same M.O. Yeah. Okay, then the police, if it's the same M.O. Mm -hmm. as Freddy Kruger used to, you know, used to do when of he course. was alive. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows that, uh, you know, the, and as far as the law enforcement community is concerned, Freddie's dead. That's right. Then, um, then um, they would probably be looking either at a follower or a copycat. Mm -hmm. And I believe we have another now, caller as well. <laughs> now, yeah. was, forgive me, I, again, I only saw one of them and it's a yeah. long time ago. Fair enough. Um, did he use a knife? Knives on his hand. Yep. Four blades. Knives. Oh. I want to say they're something like nine right. or so this, inches this long. This is sort of combining forensic science with sympathetic magic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if there are knives on his hand that he uses to inflict the wounds. Yes. Then they, those knives could leave tool marks on at least the bones of the victims. Right. Which they could given, that the same, given that the same knives are being used and it's what happens in the dream happens with real life, with real life, then the same tool, the a medical examiner would probably find the same tool marks on each of the body. Mm -hmm. mm. Applying, applying well, the, uh, one, one thing I love as far as magic's concerned is the sympathetic magic, like mm -hmm. calls the light. Mm -hmm. Or we say in we say in the crime crime lab, every contact leaves a trace. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, so you've got um, so that that would at least link the murders. Mm -hmm. yep. And if Freddie used those knives, did he use those knives when he was uh, still alive? Yes, he actually had varying uh, gloves that he would put on. But his one that was most frequently used was um, four blades. Four blades upon each of his uh, sub, um, individual fingers, fingers at, about six, at about six at about six inches in inches. length. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me digress for a minute. Mm -hmm. The movie I now want to see is Freddy Krueger versus Wolverine. <laughs> oh yes, that would be awesome. I totally yes. Yeah, somebody needs to make this happen. It will <laughs> if somebody has not already done a combination combo. We got three, three new callers coming in. Yes. Oh, okay. cool. Hello. Hi, Hello, other callers. Who, who do we have here? It's Patrick Thomas. Hey, Patrick. Oh, hey, Pat. Great timing. <laughs> I'm good. Oh, great. I, I, I strive for that. <laughs> Chuck. Congratulations. Oh, hey, Chuck. Chuck. Yes, Chuck. Hi. So we've Hi. got some of our favorite guests, in fact. <laughs> wow. So we've got, who have we got on the line? We've got Chuck. We've got Miss uh, Detective French. Yep. Uh, crime scene supervisor. Crime scene supervisor. And me. Patrick Thomas. And Patrick Thomas. 
one of my favorite, two, two of my go. favorite authors, and John and Patrick, oh, also frequent coll collaborators with each other. I've been wanting to have the two of you on together right. for a while. <laughs> and Chuck is a, a and colleague and investor. John. And you also, you also have Patrick T. Fibbs, which is the name That's Pat true. uses when it's children's fiction. Ha! Oh, there you go. Yes, I, I got. I have three books being released in December. Uh, two metal readers and a picture book. Awesome. So yes, I am now. Uh, a children's author. <laughs> Congratulations, so, to, congratulations you, sir. to you, sir. <laughs> Hands down. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, I mean, I, it, is, it is all kinds of awesome when we can get a meeting of the minds like this. I should definitely get... <laughs> You want to know what? I think we should all do a collaborative writing project similar to Lord Byron's cabin. Oh, castle. Not ca <laughs> oh, okay. The cabin on the lake. I Same thing, no that difference. That got us um, um, Frankenstein uh -huh. and um, didn't Polidari write a vampire novel? Yep, yep. The, that's the first where it was. Novel in English, in fact. Well, technically, Byron started it, got bored, and he picked it up. Yep. <laughs> to be fair, Byron couldn't keep his attention on anything for a very True, long time. True, this is why he mostly wrote poetry, not w w long novels. It's the same thing with Percy <laughs> Shelley standing there right with his wife in the cabin with them, and all kinds of writing See, came out of there. Personally, this is the thing that fascinates yep. me about that story, because you have two of the greatest literary minds of the Romantic period, mm -hmm. Lord Byron and Percy Shelley, Correct. and two complete unknowns, Mary Goodwin, who... Wrote only one other piece of fiction in her life, mm -hmm. um, and, and that was after Frankenstein. Her mother is, of course, one of the first feminists, mm -hmm. Mary Wollstonecraft. And then you have John Polidori, who was a physician, not a writer. And the two complete unknowns produced two incredibly important pieces of fiction, and the two legendary writers came up with nothing. A Well, there, there's an interesting parallel here to throw on. You have Frankenstein, and you got Dracula. You have Jason, and you have Freddy. <laughs> if you really think about it, it's a retelling. You know, and they all, and every single horror icon <laughs> could easily refill into the old Universal slots. Although it does occur to me, we have the perfect combination here. That's true. To get, I mean, Chuck is a fellow investigator, and Patrick is a fantasy horror writer, and John, it's like, what are your guys' thoughts on what Freddy is? Yeah, what is Freddy? Um, before, oh, go ahead. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that's a, good, uh, a demonic possession of the subconscious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I kind of like that. That's good. We've got another caller. Oh, wow. Oh, holy yeah. cow. See? Sweet. Hello, Arthur. Arthur. Join, uh, join the Monica. chaos. What? Arthur? <laughs> yes. Call Hello, Monica. Arthur. <laughs> Huzzah. And our friend Arthur Moyer, who's currently running Omnicon. Because this is, a, this is yeah. a really cool night. Yeah. <laughs> it is all kinds of awesome. We're getting everybody coming out of the freaking woodwork. It's awesome. <laughs> well, well, I like my question. You know, I mean, did I like actually tra did I did I trance our audience into calling? It finally worked. This is heads out the biggest number of callers we've had all at once. Well, as far as um, Patrick and Arthur go, I know I messaged both of them, and I, I've messaged everyone in the tier as well. Sure, let the hypnotist not get any credit. <laughs> Wait, but did you message? How's the, the night crazy... going for everybody? Wait, did you me did you message the crazy lady from Las Vegas and ask her to call? <laughs> we we lost her number. In all honesty, we lost her number. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was totally on purpose. Not awesome. On purpose. <laughs> get a crank caller right. and let all of us just gang up. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that, this situation that would be really unfair. We right. so <laughs> how's tonight quick... everybody going? Good. So our... I, I just did a quick just did a quick internet search for dream monsters. Mm -hmm. 
And in the Iranian mythology, there's something called a baktha, a backpack. It's um, it's the it comes to you at night, sits on your chest, give you sleep and paralysis, makes you, suffer, mm-hmm. makes you suffer horrific nightmares. Hmm. Well, there's a whole yep. series of creatures oh, throughout the world like that. Um, <laughs> in fact, the entire word nightmare comes from nightmara, mara being an old English word for demon. Well, not for nothing. We all got cats that love sitting on our chests uh-huh. in the middle of the night. Mine always like to sit on my hip. Witches are supposed to do it. There's a, there's a type of phenomenon common to Canada called the hag attacks, which is exactly what you just described. You just described my ex-wife? What? <laughs> <laughs> got you, Larry!
Um, so there are different ways the dead can rise and be used. Sometimes they are, you know, spirits that can be used as guardians. Mm. Uh, they can be used as protectors. Um, so the Romero zombies can't be reasoned with. And right. most of our zombies in literature today are based on the Romero zombies. Exactly. But there are other kinds. And there is actually... Um, they apparently you can use tetrota toxin um, mm -hmm. to make somebody so comatose that they would follow your instructions. Mm. Um, and you, one of the places you can get it is a puffer fish, uh, which is why it's not good to eat that kind of sushi unless it's prepared by someone who knows what they're doing. Mm. Patrick's so 100% there are all on different target. Origins of zombies. Now you, you reminded me of a good, of a good movie from the seventies, the non Romero movie. Uh, I don't know if anybody ever saw the movie Children Shouldn't Play with Dead Things. Yep, I've yes. seen that one. We have yet to. Yeah, to see that was a good example because yeah, there was the film crew, the hippie film crew. They go to the island, they get that satanic book to raise the dead, but of course they they f it up, and then of course <laughs> eventually the guy who read the book they turn on him and kill him. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> Wasn't there a movie called Serpent in the Rainbow that yes. also covered that as well? It's based on a true story as well. Yeah. So there's a movie that was done yeah. by Wes Craven called Serp The Serpent in the Rainbow about an ethnobotanist by the name of Wade Davis who went to Haiti because there's a report of a man by the name of Clairvaux Narcissa. Mm -hmm. He was pronounced dead in a Haitian hospital by two doctors, one of whom was trained in the United States. Ten years later, after being buried, I might add, he wandered into town, talked to people that he had known, had specific memories that only he should have known. So drug companies in the United States sent Davis down there to try to figure out what was causing this phenomenon because they thought this could be perfect for putting people into into a um anesthetic state when you need mm -hmm. to Yes, exactly. And Davis wrote a book on his experiences called The Serpent in the Rainbow that Wes Craven later would turn into a movie. Mm. Yeah. If anybody knows but, him, I'd also yeah. love to have Wade Davis on the show. Oh yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I think there's. I like, do have like to go. Him. I mean, I know I'm. Happy yeah, you got your convention. Calling, but, I mean, thank you know, so much for calling, Arthur. Convention. Indeed, thank you very much, but Arthur. I hope for calling. you guys are doing great. But, yep, we're having a really good 50th episode. <laughs> and you just made it better. <laughs> yep. Bye, thank you. Have a good night and have a I'll good time. Continues to go well. Yep. Indeed. So that was our friend Arthur, lawyer, Omnimancer, and magician. <laughs> Omnimancer and magician. I have to admit, you want to what? I heard I Omnicon. I think there's all kinds of zombies, just like there's yeah. all yeah. various kinds of vampires. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, from different cultures, and even um, you know, even even in in modern literature, there's you know different vampires. The rules basically depend on on who's doing the writing. Mm -hmm. I know I've written I've written five zombie stories. Only two of which follow the traditional Romero type zombie. And I think Romero one is. Actually, only, and, I'm sorry? I said one, one actually follows the uh, the whole Walking Dead thing because mm. that's what the editor wanted. Mm -hmm. John also has one where only the dead can travel through time. Oh, that's so they turn back right. zombies to do time travel because <laughs> living tissue can't go through time. That's one of John's too. That's a good one. I don't and, think I've read that one, though I've heard of the idea. Graves, which is my zombie book, I tried to make each of the zombies different, um, or at least most of them. So we've got zombies raised by um, the cauldron, uh, by the uh, author's cauldron. We've got demonic zombies. We've got vampire zombies. We have reanimated people. We have uh, a zombie caused by a wish to a genie or a djinn. Um, so there are different... You have different you ways to raise the dead. <laughs> Zombielicious, of course, the most popular one from that. Wait, yes. Zombielicious, oh yes. Vampire zombies. That sounds like... You know what? Now we're... I'm not criticizing. I'm not. <laughs> oh, no, I'm making that blatantly well. clear. <laughs> but, I mean, we're treading into Comic-Con creative cosplay <laughs> territory here, okay? <laughs> I mean, come there on. are worse years to compare that to. That's going through my head. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I've read the particular story. It works out nicely. <laughs> well, all right. Kind of like to to continue to piggyback on the theme a little bit. All right, you've got Jason. Obviously, is Frankenstein. Okay, the dead mm. reanimated to yeah. life. Yeah. Okay, you've got Freddy, which obviously. With the quip and suaveness of his, and violation of the bedroom, which is actually one of the key fears 
that Craven kind of based a lot of Freddy's mm-hmm. finesse to is obviously the vampire. Who would be our creature from the Black Lagoon? Or the Incubus or the Succubus, yeah. Or Incubus yep. or Succubus. Who would be our tr- Which creature from the Black Lagoon? Incubus and Chucky would be a golem. Yeah. Chucky would be a golem, yes. Chucky needs a burn. Okay. Chucky is basically a doll golem, in fact. Yes. Well, wait a minute. There was a movie out not too long ago that kind of took a variation on the creature from the Black Lagoon. Mm. The, the Shape of Water. Shape of Water. One oh. and one in Academy Award. <laughs> okay, that I haven't seen good, it yet. Well, that was a good movie. It was a it was it was a great movie. Everybody was creature from the Black Lagoon going with the deep one. Oh yeah. 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 You know, I know a little domain. bit of um, <laughs> movie trivia having to do with the creature from the Black Lagoon. Okay, let's hear it. Okay, so if you were to line up uh, the uh, um, uh, Universal Monsters in chronological order of when their movie came out, you you notice that uh, the last one was the creature from the Black Lagoon, and then they start going into uh, aliens. Right. In the movie Monsters vs. Aliens, uh, they decided to name that creature Link. Because he's missing. Not just that, but he's the link between... Aliens and, mo- and traditional monsters. Meh. Yeah. There's another um, fun one with that. Alien was upon a new story. What was that? I think Alien was your classic haunted house story. Oh, yes. yes. In space. No in question. space! <laughs> the movie that proved that, yes. And, you could... and, and possession in a way. Yes. Oh, yeah. Much so. yeah. But it's the movie that proved that actually, you can do science actually... fiction horror very well. Yes. <laughs> What was that movie that um, was basically supposed to be hell on a spaceship? Um, Event, Event Horizon. Horizon. That's what it was. The, and Dorian uh, did good the too. man who played um, the creature uh, credited as the Gill Man, mm-hmm. Rico Browning, mm-hmm. right? He's he's still alive and oh, wow. he made an appearance um, in September here in Baltimore at the Mid Atlantic Nostalgia Convention. Oh wow! Nice. Wow, given so many of the classics, oh. you know, Boris and and long. Bella are long yeah. gone. Yeah, Bella. It's cool that he's still around. Yeah, he's, he's the he's the last surviving um, he's the last survi- survivor of the classic movie monsters. Oh man, that's that's insane, man. Awesome it's... and kind of sad just to think of how many of the horror, you know. Christopher Lee, Lon Chaney, Lon Chaney Jr. Well, Christopher Everybody, Lee, I mean, we, so we've we lost, lost so many the, of the most crates. recent, you know. Yeah. I mean, Vincent but, Price. Yeah, Vinnie Price. I mean, Christopher Lee was in everything. Yeah. He oh, has the most movie credits, yeah. I think, in Hollywood history. Throw a stick, he? you're going to hit him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was in everything, and, not, and he yeah, was. The majority right. of his stuff, especially early on, was Dracula movies. Of course. Because they kept guilting him into it. Because he was good at it. Well, no, the thing was, and eventually. They kept him. Yeah. <laughs> He didn't want to get typecast as Dracula, although he wound up loving playing villain. He, he always loved playing the villains because it was the most fun. Well, it's also because of the fact that he was, in act- he was in real life a hero. So when yeah. you're in real life a hero, you have fun playing the villain. Yeah. Because wasn't he like a member of... He was a real of, like, life yeah. Nazi hunter. He was a real life Nazi hunter. He was like a member... He was a spy. Yep. Yeah. Member of the, 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 yep. the or, um, organization for, the, for ungentlemanly warfare, yeah. just like Ian Fleming, who was a, a good friend of his. Yeah, I mean, you can't... And a relative, in y- fact. You can't go any gooder Ian than Fleming, that. Really? He has yeah. to play a villain James after Bond. that. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, just to balance well, he, it maybe out. Maybe he knows, of course, he knows what he was looking for. Yep. Exactly. Channel that. <laughs> well, there's a great stories from one where he was doing um, The Man with the Golden Gun, and he was told to act the way that he thinks someone who was shot would act. So he acted the way he's seen people who got shot act. Exactly. He looked slightly confused and then slowly slumped to the floor. Or, you know, Peter Jackson during Lord of the Rings asked him, you know, make the sound you, that someone would make, you think someone would make if they were stabbed in the back. I don't have to imagine it. There you go. <laughs> I remember what it was like when I took a bullet. I took one look down and I screamed like a little bitch. I didn't even realize I got shot. I thought I twisted my leg. Other people I've talked to who have been shot describe it very similarly. Yeah. It, it, I mean, the, the thing is is that you don't feel the pain until you realize what's happened. And then when you do, it feels like broken glass on fire. Yeah. Yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> I was going to say, the other fun Doesn't one, sound like it. one with the creature from the Black Lagoon, which I always found ironic, one of my favorite childhood movies, Monster mm-hmm. Squad. Oh, God, yes. Yeah, Monster Squad is also best... available on Amazon Prime yep. if you have the... 
them. Oh, but it's widely credited as one of the best makeup jobs for a gill man in movie history, despite the fact he's barely in the movie. It, you know what? <laughs> the thing is, is that it has the most awesome line ever uttered in Wolfman's film. Wolfman's got nards. Wolfman's got nards? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I still haven't seen it. We need to fix this. I remember being The look of violence. <laughs> you look like I kicked your dog. What is wrong with you? By the way, folks, she's only seen John Wick because I told her to watch it. I haven't yeah. seen John Wick. But, uh, ha, I'm not the only one. <laughs> but actually, I was um, recently on a, uh, a Facebook group of mine, uh, and it was... Uh, yeah, tell a movie quote that uh, gives the title away without saying the title. Oh, so wait, guess what? what? So guess what one uh, mine was? Well, what? Things got nards? Yep. There hey, can Jean, be only one. <laughs> Cliff Warner says that he's here. That is uh, the other uh, magician I told you about. Oh, cool. He's saying hi because I told him to tune in here. Hi, Cliff. Hey, rock uh, on, Cliff. Uh, How you doing? Got another magician in the chat. <laughs> All right, so we've got... so. I, and actually, I would go back to Jason. I don't think he's Frankenstein, as I've been thinking about it. I think he's the mummy. You think? Because they violated his resting place. No. No, they did not. The only reason well, why he Jason... Was resting, he was resting, and then they were desecrating his resting place with their, their sex and drugs. Well, no, and no, no. It was desecrating his... his you know, his, yeah, that, point. his, his, his no. resting place. No, no, no. And so no, he no. came out to seek revenge. No, yeah. it wasn't that. His so mother, I, his mother <laughs> despised the sex and drugs, and they bl and she blamed the counselors on doing all the sex and drugs. Is the reason why her boy drowned in the lake because they were supposed to be watching him, and because of that, her own rage towards anything that was teenagery and wasn't a nun at the time immediately meant it must die so her own orders and her own decisions and her own motivations transferred onto jason which Everything. fits the traditional zombie which fits the traditional zombie or actually wouldn't it fit the traditional golem too no uh, golems were usually created to protect and you could change their orders though granted mm. But the classic Golem story, right. which comes from Prague, he was But he doesn't have the classic weakness. You know, if you take off his hockey mask, he doesn't die. True. You know, if he, if he doesn't have anything written in his, on his forehead or the mm. word of God written on paper inside his mouth. The only uh, thing that can actually kill him, out, him but, yeah. the only thing that can kill him is to drown him. Straight up. He'll swim. He'll swim fast. He can hold his water for a while. But beyond that, you drown him, he stays done. That's just it. Otherwise, he waits until, until his mother movie. wakes him. Until the next movie. That's just it. <laughs> when his mother wakes him, that's when he rises again. Although, actually, they, apparently, officially, canonically, they killed him in the, la in the Jason in Space movie. Yeah, Jason X. In Jason X, he, die he does die. But don't they, like, set the entire atmosphere on fire or something to kill him? Uh, no, they, he basically went through atmospheric reentry, and that's what killed him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ironically, here, here's an interesting little crossover bit. The person that rode him into the atmospheric entry is the same person that played the Candyman. <laughs> nice. Okay, Tony Todd. So you got Candyman riding on the back of Jason into atmospheric reentry into a planet. That's instant win. Well, here's another fun crossover for you. There is a book. So they novelized the Freddy, the Jason movies. Okay, they novelized the Jason movies. I assume they did the Freddy ones too, but they, they made novels of the Jason movies. Uh -huh. And the guy who wrote those wrote a sequel to J um, Jason Goes to Hell, The Final, Final Friday. Right. That crossed over Friday the 13th, the movie series, and Friday the 13th, the TV series. There is a shared character between the two of them. Yes. In the movies. I know. Yeah. And that's part of the crossover point is them meeting Ryan again. And r when Ryan's mm -hmm. memory, you know, it's after Ryan's been age regressed. Right. And now Ryan's memories of what he used to do is starting to come back to him. And to add a third crossover element to the whole thing, it's, it's basically stated that it was Lovecraftian magic that brought Jason back to begin with. I it believe was like, it. It was a spell from the Necronomicon. I believe it. Although I will say Which this. Which means he could cross over with Ash. Yeah, yes. there you go. And he did, in fact. He did, in fact, at one point. 
there's in the comics. Yes, but two, not in the movies, right? He was on uh, two comic series, and he was they were the original sequel to Freddy versus Jason was Freddy versus Jason versus Ash. Yep. The problem uh-huh. was basically um, Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell said Ash is the only hero of the three; he should come out on top. And Paramount and the owners of the other two went. Freddy should come out top. Jason should come up out on top, and you know Ash, you know Bruce, Bruce and Sam both said, "No, no, no! You know this is a, we want this to be the hero comes out on top. We're gonna walk otherwise." Mm. And they they kept their money where their mouth is and walked. And there you go. Now I remember the original ending to Freddy versus Jason that was originally scripted. Duh, I'm not sure if you might know this. I know. <laughs> you know this, but maybe our uh, either. Those that are on the call or our mm-hmm. listeners do not know. When no, I don't. I'm sorry. No, I don't. Not... I'd, oh, I'd be interested in hearing that. I mean, I love the ending of the movie, but I was it was yeah. I'm definitely curious about how it was originally scripted. The original scripted ending. All right, both Jason and Freddy are both back in hell. They both Here realize where they're at, and they are about to come at it with one another. The next thing you know, both of them are suddenly engulfed in chains and pulled apart. And suddenly, somebody emerges from the shadows, draped in a leather trench coat with several shining pins protruding from the skin of his head. And he <laughs> simply states, is there a problem, gentlemen? I had heard that, too. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> that would have been an awesome crossover. Oh, yes. God, well, yes. Well, that would have been the sequel. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Hands down with There were several attempts at a sequel. One was, of course, to bring in Pinhead. Bradley would have loved oh, to yeah. have done it. Doug Bradley s- flat out stated, if they ever make another film where there is a crossover with Freddy and Jason, Doug Bradley would love well, to do it. Well, you know the it. big movie that's supposed to have come out, but I can't find it for the life of me? What? Death House. The, I heard of Do you that. guys know about Death House? Yes, but please tell our Callers, listeners. do you know about Death House? No, I don't. So Death House was designed to be the Expendables of I'm Brian. Here! Brian! Our missing co-host has finally turned up. Awesome sauce! But, so Death House was scripted to be the Expendables of Horror. Doug Bradley, Robert England, um, what's the guy who's famous for playing Jason? Uh, Kane Hodder. Kane Hodder, um... Jamie Lee Curtis, the guy who played Chucky, the guy who played Candyman, the guy who Brad played... Brad Dorff, Tony Todd. Keep on going, man. I played, got a whole um, list in my head. E- like, every major person from horror in the last cut several decades was coming to get together to do this movie about a supermax prison that ha- houses the worst of the worst and, cl- and does, like, all the paranormal research and stuff the U.S. government does. Nice. And I don't know what happened to it. It was supposed to have come out by now. Uh, yeah, it says release date February 23rd, 2018. But I keep finding c- conflicting things that it's come out, that it is still coming out. I can't find it anywhere. I mean, it, it has a 4.9 on IMDb and a 79% on uh, Google users. So it did come out. It's just... You, you missed, missed it. it. Yeah. the video? Yeah. It wasn't supposed to be. It was supposed to be a big... Try, on, try Netflix. I have. I've tried Netflix, Netflix, Amazon, Hulu... Let's oh. try Google Shopping. It's not even uh, giving me that option to do Google Shopping. Yeah, you can't even buy it on Amazon. Like, buy it on Amazon, let alone see, watch that, it on Amazon. Yeah. Anyway. Well, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bow out. I okay. just wanted to say again, happy uh, 50th show anniversary. Patrick, awesome. so much Thank for joining us. Thank you for having me back on. You're always, uh, as I've, I said to Karen and I'll say to everybody else here, you guys are always welcome. You, you know, we love our guests. Indeed. Well, thank you. Maybe one time you can have John and I on, and I'm sure we could talk to you for hours. Yeah. Without um, a doubt. You guys get in touch with me, and we'll set that up. Okay, so as far as DVD goes, uh, apparently it's supposed to be released at December 11th, 2018. Okay. December 11th, red letter date. Yep. So anyone wants to check that out. Indeed. Brian, you want to come in and join us? Come on, join us. Join us, one, one of, of us, us, one, one of, of us. us. Weebo wabba, weebo wabba. I will come closer to Kev. Wires. Yep. Ah, I'm stuck. You've I'm missed Karen Kimmel Tipper was the first person to call in. We, uh, Patrick just signed out. Arthur was here. Chuck's here. Chuck, you still here? I'm still here. And John, you still here? I'm still here. Yep, we still got John French and Chuck from, um, what's the name of your paranormal group again, Chuck? I should know this. 
Uh, just Chuck's Paranormal Adventures. I'm the I'm I'm the solo guy, so I really don't have a group. So <laughs> we should that way, form that way one. I, I avoid all the paradrama of everybody wanting to be oh, yeah, top dog. Do it my way. Do it this way. I don't feel like doing research. I don't feel like doing evidence review. So this way, it's all on me. I don't have to worry about uh, other people and. Oh. Uh, yeah, I've had those issues as well. Well, look, you're gonna be, you are awesome as long as you're not waving an Adachi around inside of a building <laughs> and claiming to open up demonic doors just to take care of other demons in the place. No, because that chick's already been used. I got to come up with something even more Another dramatic caller? and creative. So uh, okay, we have somebody else on the line. Who we got? Welcome aboard. Hello. Hello. Oh my. So who's this? <laughs> I think I know Aaron, that voice. I am Baron Voltage's girlfriend. Oh, yes. Hi. The ever popular Aaron. Hello. Oh, yes. The ever popular Aaron. I thought I recognized your voice. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I have That's one a... of those annoying voices that you can't. You can't I wouldn't get say out it's annoying. <laughs> oh, my. So, uh, how are you liking the show so far? <laughs> I actually am just watching it now, but I thought I would. Um, bring up something that I, I've been watching on Netflix, which is actually quite interesting. I think that may actually be good to talk about on the show. Okay. Fire away. Okay, so I've been watching this show on Netflix called Dark Tourist, and it's a journalist oh, yes. from New Zealand hmm. who goes to all these different countries and um, looks into like either paranormal stuff or... Um, places of interest, like, you know, where only, like, the crazy, like, tourists would want to go, like, um... Feel like me. Yesterday, <laughs> I... Yeah, so yesterday, I, I was listening to a podcast, and they had mentioned how there is this haunted house in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And you know that only the rednecks do this, because they're crazy. And I was actually talking to Baron Voltage about it because he dabbles in um, recreational hypno hypnosis. And there is this haunted house where you have, where it's like a four, you have to sign a 46 page, like, non -dis like a disclosure degree agreement with the person that runs the haunted house saying that they are not liable for you getting broken bones mm -hmm. or anything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, it's one of those extreme cases. Yeah, it's one of the extreme haunted, haunted houses. It's There's one in New York as well. It's not like, you know, where it's like, you know, you go to like a haunted house, like let's say Headless Horseman Haunted House. In oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Upper New York City. It's like water, they're going to subject like you to water torture. And like rattle you mm -hmm. and scream in your face and touch you. This psychological haunted house is to the nth degree scary like mm. they will literally take you tape your eyes and then like videotape you and psychologically torture you like mm -hmm. yeah the host of the show he could barely go like 30 seconds without saying all right i'm done yeah. the second guy that went he's an adrenaline junkie and he was dipped repeatedly in ice water, and the guy was like, I want you to hold your breath for 30 seconds, and if you don't hold your breath for 30 seconds, we're going to keep doing this to you. He tapped out after two minutes. Then there was a couple that went in, and I think they got dunked in ice water. They got buried alive. The wife, I think, lasted two or three hours, and then... The husband tapped out shortly after her. The longest person that lasted in that place was like six hours. Yeah. Wow. Just lasting that long. I've heard about this. There's one called Black Hole that happens in New York. Yeah. And they're infamous. I mean, like strap you down and subject you to what to actual proper waterboarding. Yeah. There's and force you to yeah, watch horrific videos. That's what they do at the psychological like haunted house. They will like yeah. literally tape you down, put you in a yeah. straight jacket, yeah. make you feel helpless because they want to psychologically. For the record, you, no, you will not ever catch down. me going into one of those places. It sounds like where that's where Deadpool was formed. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, nobody's supposed well, to know what I've really did. And you can pay a, lots of money to go to these a things too. Former mm -hmm. ex-military sergeant. Yeah. Yeah, they. 
even former military try and do it, they get out. Like, they they tap out after like a good like fifteen or twenty minutes, crying like little babies. Oh yeah. It's there are a lot of uh, actual places that are like this. I know of one that was um, out in L. A. That I, I think L. A. or California that just recently closed down because of complaints and whatnot. And the waiting list alone for that one was like three years to get in. That's wow. the same haunted house. That's no, it's a similar one. They're all over the country. No, there's, there's a number of them. California, yeah. but then they moved to Tennessee and I want to say Louisiana or Alabama. No. There's a few There's a the few of them, believe it or not, Aaron. There's like maybe about a good eight or ten of them that are like that. So it's it's... It's a serious extreme thing, but here's something I actually think would be interesting. I think for a good haunt, throw people in Eastern State Penitentiary overnight. You know that they do oh, a yeah. haunted house in Eastern State. I'm talking overnight. Yeah, they do it at night, and I've been there overnight. Over, yeah, and how much did you experience, and how quite scared were you? <laughs> Not very, because yeah, I mean, that's they also that I missed charge a quite a bit of money to yeah. Yeah. do it. To do an in overnight investigation is 50 bucks each an hour. Asleep. I would like literally be sitting there with like my onesie on, holding my stuffed <laughs> elephant, and just holding a, a flashlight, being like, all right, fuckers, come after me. Mm. Yeah. E Eastern is, uh, th this is something I can say in general from experience, because I've been in, in abandoned mental hospitals, I've been in um, abandoned, and for that matter, current hospitals. They are, spiritually speaking, are not nice places, and it's not... Because of the people there, it's the thing is, negative spirits, demons, and things of that nature are drawn to human suffering. And Yeah, and especially psychological, um, yes. psychological like that. And a lot of... Um, considering, not to interrupt, um, I was in, I, I'm in the medical field, and um, I'm very drawn to how we as um, a society, you know, between this day and age and in the early 1800s, uh, like early 1900s, treated our fellow man with mental illnesses. Oh, yeah, Hor Like horrific. we would lock them in cages. We would throw them, like we would chain them to walls and leave them for days on end. Yeah. Treat them like and a circus, charge people to go visit and see them. Now, Kevin. Yeah. You stated there were things that you've experienced in Easton that were extreme. Could you please tell us some of them? Well, I wouldn't actually call them particularly extreme. I mean, they're pretty standard for haunted houses, mm -hmm. actual haunted houses, I should say. Very well. But one of the most active parts of the prison is cell block 12. So um, most notably, my mentor, the late Lou Gentili, was physically attacked on live television there years and years and years ago on the very first season of Fox Family Channel's Scariest Places on Earth. They did a segment and he's doing EVP in one of the cells and he has to, he provokes it and demands in God's name it reveal itself and it looks like some somebody hits his hand with a sledgehammer. You don't see what hits it but you just see like him fly back and to soak his hand in ice for an hour. So I'm sitting up at three o'clock in the morning which is a high time for demonic activity at the top of the cell block um, I had at the time believed incorrectly that it was where, they, it was where death row was, but they, they didn't c execute prisoners there. But it was where the more extreme prisoners were held. And we're sitting up on the top of there, down at the, one, at the far end of it, farthest away from the entrance, and doing EVPs. And I'm seeing these shadows running up and down the hallways. I'm seeing lights flying up and down all over the place. We're hearing voices. We're hearing music. It is definitely one of the most active prisons in the country. One of the most active anything in the United States, in fact. How pleasant. I know a jail Coast that's uh, I know a jail that's actually active during the daytime. But you have to go into the basement to find it. Which jail? Um it's a smaller known one. Up in uh there's this little town in Pennsylvania called Jim Thorpe. Yep, that jail. I knew, I thought that's the one you were thinking of. Um mm -hmm. and I've actually been in it numerous times because they do the tours year yeah. round. My family used to go camping up there. Um and some of the back trails have a uh, few minor things along it, especially if you're along where um, some of the old coal is around. Um, <clears throat> but as they're going through the tour, um, afternoon-ish, um, it, it wasn't that strong last time I was up there, um, where they had the hand on yeah, the wall. Yeah, the hand print on the wall. This uh, is the, the one that held the Molly Malone's, wasn't it? Molly McGuire's, McGuire's, which was nothing more than a smear campaign. Um, however, down in the very, very small basement, um, 
they had like I want to say three to four cells. No light, no toilet, no bed, nothing. It was complete and total sensory deprivation, especially when you were down there by yourself because this is, you know, back in the 1800s, they didn't really have, you know, padding or soundproofing or anything like that. It was thick fucking stone that was, pardon my language, that's surrounding yeah. you on all sides. And very little could come out through that doorway um, where the window was because they mm -hmm. needed to be able to see and to see that you were there. Um, but the far end of the hallway gets really, really suffocating. Like, they normally have a flashlight or whatnot. They never installed lights down there because mm -hmm. they didn't want to get um, interfered with. But the very end was where they kept the worst of them. Mm. If whatever you did to screw up was that bad, you and stuff lingers there. And it was actually fairly active. It was like pushing you out, going, get the hell away from me. Mm. I got a account about that prison, in fact. So a very good friend of mine, Gil Kanan, who um, has been involved in a number of events, has re reports that he shot a recreation of the Molly Maguire hanging in that prison. It was one of the weirdest shots of his life. Uh, let me reread this. Hold on. That was one of the weirdest shots of my life. Sorry, I had a I thing. I don't up. doubt that. Um, Gil, feel free to call in about that. Uh, 8609 And... Um, yeah, again, for anyone who's curious, it was the first season of Fox Family Channel's Scariest Places on Earth. It was like the first or second episode Lou was on there in Eastern State. Wow. I'm thinking there of... There was actually a thing that, um, because I live in West Millsburg, New Jersey, and there was a thing about Scariest Places on Earth. Number two was Clinton Road in West Millsburg. Mm -hmm. mm. And... I for people that don't know about Clinton Road, Clinton Road is a is a very winding road in West Milford, and there is a lot of rumors around West Milford. I, I mean, around Clinton Road. One of the rumors is that if you go down Clinton Road on a very dark night, there are there are no headlamps. There, I mean, there are no street lights, um, and there is a thing called the Phantom Cab. Uh, the phantom truck so you could be driving down clinton road and all of a sudden out of nowhere there's a phantom truck behind you that will literally ride your bumper to get you to crash into dead man's turn that, that seems to or be will flash their headlights at you non-stop and then all of a sudden will disappear out that, of nowhere that there's be another one um about the look like you know if you Oh, yeah, yeah there, there, there is a whole bunch of ones that are like that. I there's mean, supposed to be a satanic cult operating in the area, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, and, and, it, and here's, here's the funny thing. There's, um... And now her sound is going weird. Yeah, it is. Aaron? Something's wrong with your, with your sound. If I could lighten the mood for a minute. Yes. Sure. Please. <laughs> You're talking about the Phantom Cab. Um, you know that guy in space. I can't think of his name. He was uh, he was doing space balls. He could make all the noises with his mouth. Michael Winslow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Before him, there was a guy named Wes Harrison, mm -hmm. and he could do just about any noise in the world with just himself and a microphone. Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't just limit this to the stage. He had a pickup truck. That, that he had equipped with a loudspeaker. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I see so, where this is going. You know, so he would do stuff, you know, just probably illegal and dangerous, but he would, when he was doing, he was like driving back and forth, and he would, you know, and at night, he would go through this small town. And when he went through the town, he would make the sound of a locomotive. <laughs> There weren't any tracks anywhere around. But people would wake up hearing the sound of a, of a train going through their town. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and apparently we have more callers. We got another caller. Who we got? Hello, you're on the Yeah, it's me again. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, she hung up and, and came And now back. your sound's better. And now my sound is better. But and, Gene, were you saying there were two? Road. Yes, there is the thing about the whole satanic rituals happening. Mm. Like, I think it's called the devil's right. circle. Okay. And 
my boyfriend, my ex-boyfriend actually told me how he went to, I think, Clinton Road one night, and um, there were a bunch of people there, like, trying to perform a satanic ritual where they were going to sacrifice a goat. And he stumbled upon them, and he was, like, screaming at them to, like, not hurt the goat, not hurt the goat. And the people were coming after him, like, and then all of a sudden, I think what happened was, like, I think they were playing aerosol or something. They, like, fired a gun at the people trying to perform the satanic ritual. They ended up running away, and they ended up saving the goat's life. But... When he told me that, I was like, aye, aye, aye. "Whoa!" I mean, there's there's a lot of legends and whatnot that come through. I mean, yeah. it seems like almost every single county in New Jersey has that one winding road that everybody talks about. Monmouth County, you have Igo Road, Shades of Death Road, Shades of Death Road. I mean, there's there's, there's, there's places tons. in Pennsylvania, as yeah, well. tons as well. And you know what I mean? In all honesty, yeah, some of them can be a little bit on the trippy side, and a yeah. bit, you know. Gil shared some st about what happened with him with the Molly McGuire pl hanging mm -hmm. thing. So every time they shot the actual hanging, they lost power entirely in the building. And apparently when they went back and reviewed the footage, all the sound got lost too. How interesting. And as I said in the chat, and I, I will confirm again, you know, to normal people, this is bizarre. To an investigator, this is a day ending and why. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, it's... Now, this is why you don't piss off evil spirits. <laughs> Even normal spirits will do this stuff to you. A lot of them like yeah, to play pranks, period. My, my big thing when I go investigating is the battery drainage. And, it's, it's, and I could be in a place where, you know, like this, a good example, Burlington, well, I guess that's, that's not a good example. But there's places I've been in where there's benign spirits, and you got that fully charged four hour camcorder battery, and after 15 minutes, it's completely drained dry. And it's yep. just. To me, it's my number one bane. I get, I, I'm more annoyed when it happens yeah. that I, I, I'm frightened that something's about to happen because the energy was. It's like not and again. Now I gotta go fish out another battery and replace it. And it always seems to be about 15 minutes too, in my experience. Well, that's all it takes for spirit to necessarily manifest itself. It drains all your batteries. It's like, okay, you want to wait? It's like I just had a can of Coke. It's Jolt Cola at the best. <laughs> You know? Well, I remember being with Lou at the Balroy Mansion in Philadelphia, yeah. which is an interesting place. It was um, it's no longer open to the public, as far as the last time I checked. It was owned by the last living descendant of General Meade from the Civil War. Had a bunch of really cool artifacts, like um, one of the first five grandfather clocks built in the United States, a silver serving set they used at a party after they signed the Declaration of Independence. Nice. Um. And they saw lots of ghosts, including, in fact, Thomas Jefferson showed up from time to time around the grandfather clock. Hmm. But there's, the two funny stories I he remember are one, that there's a chair there. He should have stayed. That the chair has a, the ghost of a woman associated with it. And when it, mm. the woman will occasionally beckon somebody to sit in the chair. Four people have been beckoned by this woman to sit in that chair, and all four of them died within a year. Over the course of the night that the... Before we got told which chair it was, both Lou and I were tempted to sit in exactly the chair in question. Gee, I wonder. You see, this is why we can't take you places and why we can't have nice things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was and just the, about to say, this is why we can't have nice things. And Lou's around, wandering around doing EVPs without me while I'm keeping an eye on this, the said chair. And again, brand new, fresh set, set of batteries in the quarter. 15 minutes, they're gone. And then it happened again. You see, that was a spirit that knew <laughs> what you were trying to do yeah. and just decided to screw with you. Ghosts can be trolls, too. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, actually... Guys? Yes? yes sir. Guys, if there's nothing else for me, I'm going to take off. Okay, John, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for all of your support. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. <laughs> and um, Kevin will be at... Pat and I will be at the Fairy Con again this year if you want to come by. We're planning on coming by. All righty, well, see we'll see you then. Yep. Have a good night, John. And, and Kevin, uh, good night. I got to I got to go too cuz I have to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning for work. So Okay, Chuck, just, thank just you for joining us as well. <laughs> you take it easy too, sir. <laughs> well, so, happy anniversary again, 50 thank you. in the books and looking forward to another 50. Indeed. Thank you. Indeed. Good, sir. And again, like uh, everyone you else, you're you're welcome on any time. Indeed. Great, thanks. You all take care now. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you much. 
Have a good night, sir. Okay. And we're down to our last Bye -bye. half hour. So if you guys wanted to do anything, if we you to do might any... want to do it now. Or would you oh, rather you start with some hypnosis? That might take longer than this. Probably. Then do this. Yeah, do the magic. Uh, while he's setting it up, uh, should wow. I tell the story Breaking of what order. happened to me uh, <laughs> Tuesday night? Uh, yeah, why don't you do that, hon? And does anybody have a deck of playing cards? Um, no. Not that'll work, no. Oh. I have several decks with me. None of them are going to be appropriate. All right, so uh, I have uh, just taken over uh, Kevin's uh, security gig at a water treatment plant uh, that we know for a fact is haunted. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, we know at least uh, one right, uh, water the elemental is there. Yeah, we also know that the abandoned house just slightly down the road uh, is haunted. Right. From that direction, uh, in Tuesday night, uh, to, I see this uh, light start uh, coming towards me. Uh, this light uh, to, uh, comes towards me. It uh, 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 separates into four individual lights, manifests a fifth orange Green light, uh, veers to the left, uh, and disappears. Green chair. Don't need the chair. Very well. Yeah. UFOs. Yeah, now, it's UFO. <laughs> yeah, now, I was uh, trying to figure out for a while what it was and got me a little uh, in my um, paranormal paranoia. <laughs> Luckily, uh, I had a friend uh, in a... Uh, and I told her what happened, and she's like, oh, do you want me to check the area out? And I, and I go, sure. Yeah, it was uh, some sort of thing, uh, thing, just pulling a prank. Fairy, probably. Go yeah. figure. I'm 85% sure it was a fairy. And I tried to tell you exactly the same thing I might have. Yeah, no, uh, uh, you said it was likely fairy, uh, but we were still not sure. Yeah. Uh, though now I'm uh, pretty sure that's what's haunting the abandoned house, considering it came from that direction. Quite possible. And it apparently it likes to uh, use the light trick because it, it keeps uh, appearing at, and disappearing it, in, uh, randomly. Hey, uh, and um, that, that's why it's called fairy lights. Yes. Yeah. And let's shall we? We're gonna stick a sword through my producer's throat again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> again? Yeah. We did it once before. You need a strap. It, it could help. Okay, never mind that. <laughs> Yay for swords. They're always fun. That's a great cure for strep, I promise. Oh, yeah. Are you sure about that? Oh, yeah. Clear that tickle in your throat right out. There's blood all over. You feel it yet? One, two, three. Oh, yay. <laughs> And if we could turn it to the side so everybody could get a good... Yay. See, so it clears it, tickling your throat right on out. Guaranteed. <laughs> and ready? One, two, three. No you get your boot up your ass later. <laughs> of course I am. I look bad. She just tells me like Very awesome. And I have a little bit more on me. Oh, my. Although we don't have time for me to get all of the bags of tricks out. For <laughs> Let's see. I could read a person's mind. Actually, Beth, stay up here. I'll need you for this as well. Oh, great. So, we have the magician's purse. It's not like a normal purse, because, you know, normal purses have bags. Actually. Wait, you has money? So we're going to reach into the purse. Not usually. We're going to pull out one. Two balls. I'm going to give one ball to her. Close your hand. Put the purse away. We're gonna put the we rub, we rub, we rub, we rub, we rub. Open your hand. Two balls. Now we're gonna take two balls, close it up, and I'm gonna find a third ball. And now she's gonna offer. Dun dun dun. <laughs> You really want me to trance somebody out on this camera, don't you? Yes. There's a sacrificial lamb. Maybe. Brian is the one who originally volunteered. Brian was tribute originally. He mm. was, wasn't he? Mm. You still game, Brian? Uh, we could, we could try. <laughs> All right, I, uh, I, I, I could. Damn hat! I don't know what's gonna happen. The thing is, I don't even need you to get out of that chair. 
Okay. That's the beautiful part. You can just be as relaxed as you can be. All right. All right. Um, what I am going to do is I am going to take the headphones off. I suggest you do the same because okay. I want you to be able to hear my voice in its natural state. All right. Everybody else can be listening. Now, just to make sure that I can make everything clear here, everybody experiences trance in their own way. He's not going to fall asleep unless he's not had sleep in a while. He's very much like me most of the time. Good reason not to use me. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Now, I want you just to, you know, just be aware of your body. Just relax. You okay. Know? Be as comfortable as you can be. You know, if you're in a comfortable chair right now or if you're, you know, just mm. be completely and totally relaxed. What I want you to do is I want you to breathe in deep through your nose and out your mouth. But here's the kick. When you're breathing in through your nose, I want that breath to take three seconds, and I want you to hold it for three and then let it out your mouth for three. Oh. So it'd be square breathe. Yep, essentially a triangle breathing. It'd be in through the nose, out through the mouth, but you're holding it in for three seconds on all three bits. I just want you to keep doing that. There you go. Three in through the nose. One, two, three. Hold it. One, two, three. Out. One, two, three. Good. You know, just be as relaxed as you can be. You can try to keep your eyes open if you want to. You don't have to. It'll be difficult, but I'm sure. But the thing is, is that as you're breathing, your body's going to get a little bit more oxygenated. I'm going to explain what's happening. Right now, his body and his blood is going to be getting more and more oxygenated. You can keep doing the breathing. Don't stop. Don't forget. And as you're breathing in and out in that particular way, you know, your body's just going to get more and more relaxed with every single breath. You know, that's, that's the beauty about breathing. It relaxes the body. You know, just get... Comfortable, you know, if you need to, you can let your arms slash to the side if you want to. You can just deep breathing in and out. There you go. The thing is, is that hypnosis is not an instant thing. He's doing fantastic because normally Brian's our straight guy, which means he's fairly uptight and fairly straight up. And right now I'm actually seeing him slouch, and it's kind of awesome to see because he's actually relaxing a little bit. I can kind of see it a little bit in his, in his demeanor. It is funny, but I just want you to keep on breathing. There you go. There you go. Just let your body relax. Just let your eyes just relax. Try to keep them open if you need to, but if not, you can just let them close when they become relaxed enough. fine, keep going. The thing is, is that as I'm doing this, I'm letting all of his muscles go with oxygen, which in turn is going to relax him even further. I'm making his whole body do work for him. Now that I think you've been oxygenated enough, I do want you to close your eyes for just a moment, okay? Just relax, that's all. And as you're doing that breathing, you're just going to think of relaxation entering in through your nose when you breathe in tension leaving out your lips when you breathe out. Just think of it almost like a physical force. In through your nose and out through your mouth. Good. That's all. Perfect. So you're doing great. Through your nose, nose, out. Good. That's it. You feel yourself starting to relax a little bit more and a little bit more. begin to feel the tension start to leave. Almost like a, I guess you could call it a dysmorphic sort of sensation to it. Like he'll be aware of his hands and his arms, but they won't necessarily be his own. He says he's breathing right now. The moment he starts to feel relaxed, he'll notice that his left hand is starting to become lighter than it actually is. It's the weirdest thing. It's, it's a it's somewhat peculiar phenomenon when you breathe in. The left hand somehow starts getting lighter and lighter 
and the right hand starts to get heavier and heavier with every single breath in and out. And it starts to get a little bit lighter. Ah, you see, there you go. Now this is what we actually <laughs> call a break in the nature. You can put your headphones on and I'm gonna bring you back up, don't worry about it. This is a break, this is what we call a hypnotic break. <clears throat> What happens is I said something that completely and totally conflicted with his logic. I was purposely testing to see exactly where that limit was. Uh. As with all hypnosis, hypnotists and subjects, it helps to have a good rapport. Unfortunately, I don't have that much of a good rapport with Brian quite yet. I haven't figured out what your modality is. I also know you have trouble relaxing, mm. which makes things a hell of a lot more difficult. I also had a very, very anxiety producing day. Yes, in which case then, you know what? This is a prime example this is why not the day to do it. Do you want to hug Kitty Pillow? Yes. I he wants to hug Kitty Pillow. Yeah. Hey, hey, so the kitty that's, pillow. that's why I bought Kitty Pillow, and that's Huzzah. why I spray it with perfume. There you go. Now, I happen to know for a generalized fact that Beth is rather susceptible. <laughs> she doesn't think that she is. <laughs> See, I thought you were waiting for me to like lift my hand up and stuff. No, uh, I was purposely testing to see exactly okay. where the site, where the break was going to be at. I knew you had a pretty crap day, so I wasn't going to necessarily try and push it off. And the relaxation that was specifically to get you to calm down. Yeah, it did help. Yes, which I've is done, what I've done relaxation and uh, mm -hmm. mindfulness techniques like that. Yeah, and there you go. That's all hypnosis is. It's a mindfulness technique that's mm -hmm. guided. Do you have enough time fun. to do Beth? Because if not, I do have so, I do have backup. I I have enough time to do Beth. I'm pretty sure I have enough to phrasing. So to speak. <laughs> I know. Phrasing. Oh yeah. Phrasing. Boom. And my choice of phrasing was a total accident. Honest. Phrasing uh, a lack. Yeah right. <laughs> well, that is honest. Yep. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> it's what the cross fingers traditionally mean. All right. Same bit. Okay. I'm gonna tilt the mic away. I'm gonna take off the headphones because I want you to. Now, Beth has a lovely little thing where she can't focus her thoughts at all. I know this for a fact. I also know that she trusts me enough not to make her do anything stupid. He so, knows I'll kick his ass. That's if you remember it. And I'll kick his ass, too. There you go. Yeah. See what I mean? Yes, It'll be a line of up. the butt kicking. Right. So, Beth, what I'm going to have you do, though, is I am going to have you just rest your hand in my you let it be the back or front, whatever one you're comfortable All with, right. okay? I'm just going to actually have you do the exact same thing okay. in regards to the breathing, but I want your eyes to stay open. Okay. Okay? Because I'm first going to try one thing, okay? This entire time, you're just going to have your hand relaxed with every single word you hear me speak. You're going to start to feel that get a little bit heavier. It's weird. It is weird. Okay? I want you to focus on my finger. Okay. Okay? Are you focused on my finger? Yes. First, you want to be hypnotized, correct? It's, it's important to figure that out. Yes, I've been willing to let him try. Okay, good. <laughs> the thing is, is that I'm pretty damn sure I will succeed. The question is, is can you try not to be? <laughs> but I don't want you to try not to be. Placing bets now, everybody. Okay. It's <laughs> been a long going feud. I want you One to relax. One of the Vegas hogs. Okay. I want you to relax. You can keep your eyes open for as long as you can. You can try, I'm sure. Okay? All right. But just focus your, thing, focus your vision on the tip of my finger. Let your body relax with every breath you take in. Every single word that I'm speaking is just making the hand get a little bit harder and harder to keep up. But you can let it relax in my hand, it's fine. And as my finger continues, get closer. You're gonna find yourself slowly but surely getting that. Get more and more relaxed. Just let your eyes focus on the finger. Close for now. Okay. I'm not going to do anything. No, I'm telling you to close the window. Okay? 
This is why somebody with this kind of thing is fun. <laughs> I want you. See, I told you I'd make a laugh. <laughs> Now, the funny thing is, is that with a person's mind every single time, whenever they're experiencing any kind of stimulus, it creates an electrical impulse in the brain. You know about this, mm -hmm. okay? They're called synapses. Now, the thing is, is that it's gonna create a light. Now, you have a little bit of like ADD, ADHD, okay? Every single time, whenever you're experiencing something, a new light pops up. You're hearing my voice, boom, a light comes up. You think about hearing my voice, a light pops up. You're feeling your hand in mine, a light pops up. Every single thing around you is just nothing but a swirl of lights. Every single word spoken, every single sound, the studio, the air, the feeling on the chair, feeling of my hand, all bright lights, all one thing. And I want you to think of all of those lights and that creates yet another light. I want you to think of them all swirling. And I want you to focus on just that thought and breathing and that creates yet another light and another. And I want you to relax and feel your entire stream of consciousness as those lights swirling around, picturing them, letting go, sort of like a small tornado and yet another light, slowly descending down a drain. Nice relax, descend. Nice and calm, descend. single light now just going down into that dark pit. Yeah, another light goes when you're imagining that. So eventually you find yourself completely, totally, absolutely relaxed. And now we're going to have her come back up. How you feeling? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, a nice little trance state. Yeah. Told you I'd do it. Sure. Yep. Now the thing is, is that I guarantee you, you were completely and totally aware of everything I was saying and doing, correct? Well, yeah, it's essentially guided meditation. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which I've been doing since I was 12. So. And there you go. She knew exactly what it was that I was doing, but at the same time, that's all trance was. Yeah. Now here's the funny thing. I can only hear myself on my right side. That's odd. <laughs> I know. Interesting. Did I just trance myself into making myself deaf on my left? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the, the wire. Quite the possible. Yeah, quite possible. That's probably yes. the wire. I think it was the wire. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's... Oh, that's what you meant by only a card I could use. <laughs> Actually, believe it or not, that would have been perfect. No, it wouldn't. Oh, uh, wouldn't have? No. Oh, gosh darn it. Special deck, specially prepared for... T in case of tonight. Oh. I am going to demonstrate... In my opinion, the single greatest of all card tricks. Okay, you're going to do it on me? I'm going to do it on several people, inclu including your girlfriend, if she's open. Oh, gosh. So, let's see. Hi. Beth. What? Red or black? Black. Brian, spades or clubs? Spades. So, spade, so a black spade. Um, Baron, face card or number card? Face. Aaron, Jack, yeah. Queen, King, or Ace? Queen. So we have chosen randomly. I had no influence on this. The Queen of Spades, right? Mm-hmm. I have a deck of 52 cards here. As soon as he can get them out. As he soon as I can get deck. them out. <laughs> he can't handle his deck, everybody. You will see. That they're all facing the same way, except for one, which I prepared before the show. Now, this was as random a draw as possible. I chose Erin because she's the person who happens to be on the phone right now. So no pre advanced preparation. The cards are a little, the card is why a little do, stuck together. Why do I have to get picked? But you can see there's one card this facing the wrong way. Baron, please pull that out. I need to go hide in my hobbit hole now. Flip so it around good. and show everybody. Oh, you son of a... The queen of spades. 
Okay, Samwise, go get your gaffer now. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite of all card tricks. That was very good. That was very good. Thank you, gentlemen. The frick did you do? Magic. Yeah, I get that. That's, the frick did you do? That's one, of the, that's one of the few that I can't figure out how it's how he does it. So that's pretty good. Oh, son of a. It's because I'm psychic. Aww. You got that. <laughs> Says the one that I did the mind reading trick on. Mm -hmm. Blow me. Uh -huh. And for the oh, record, wait, that's right. There are fifty-three different ways to do this trick. I can even do it with the jo with the jokers. Yeah, <laughs> this guy here. <laughs> He's a joker. Oh my! To left me and to the right. Yeah. A very paranormally themed card trick to wrap us all up for tonight. I actually meant to bring these with me last week oh. when we were talking about psychics. I like this idea because this is one of the most famous tests. For psychic oh, phenomenon yes. there is. Anyone who has seen the original Ghostbusters will recognize this. So you have cards with three wavy lines, squares, circles, and stars. Stars. And we just don't have the electric shots. crosses. Let's see if I can actually figure these out. <laughs> well no, I'm going to hold the, I'm going to shuffle them up and hold out a card and show it to the audience and show it to the rest of the my panel. And then I'm going to tell you without looking at it what it is. Oh, really? Oh, oh really? he's done this at the dinner table before. This is before you joined us. Oh, go figure. Oh, my. <laughs> yep. Oh, my. Hey, yes. you missed that party. Okay, mm. so not to make it too easy, I won't take the one from the top of the deck. We'll take this one. Uh-huh. Okay. See if I, how it's going so far. Is it a circle? I do believe it is a circle. Very well done. It's clearly a flat sphere. Hmm. Which would be a circle, yes. And I'm not looking at the screen on the t computer, which would be mm -hmm. cheating. <laughs> that would be wavy like the ocean. That's the three wavy lines. Am I right? Yep. That would be right. Very, very, very Here, well done. <laughs> pull one out. At random, just and so it's not that I have some prearranged order. Right. Right. And, and just to make sure he's Show not around. looking at the screen, at, and, uh, and our uh, let me know when you've shown it around. Post to I have just to that would be the a screen. circle. Are these freaking things transparent or something? <laughs> no. I'm there's some, saying. There's something. There is something. There's always something. There's a trick. This dude. It's on the back. I, I am not a psychic. I do not have supernatural powers. I am a magician. Mm. This is a trick you can learn. I will, in fact, tell you where I bought it. I will not. Again, magician's oath. I will not reveal how my tricks are done. This is why I'm not a magician. I'm a hypnotist. Because the guy who, who sold this to me and sold me most of the other things I've shown you tonight... Um, is a good friend of mine, and he has a wonderful shop. There's a shop in North Jersey called Morley's Magic Shop. Oh, yes, that's right. Butler, New Jersey. Yes. Um, Scott Morley, the guy who owns it, is a super nice guy. Morley. And he sells a metric ton of magic gear. For I'll put it like this. Folks, I bought this. This is one of the first stage props I ever bought. Um, online, it goes for about $100. It was about $30 cheaper buying it from him. Rock on. So... Better prices, excellent customer service, super nice guy, and it's always better to buy it in the actual shop because you act, cause any good shop, they'll demonstrate it for you. You get to see it, make sure it's something that fits your act. But that is going to bring us to the end of our 50th episode. Um, a couple things we've got to do before our last ad. Folks, mm -hmm. um, to all of our listeners, whether you've been with us for the, since the first episode or the, whether you're just tuning in for the first time, thank you so much. We love you all. Um, please remember to, if you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe. Go on to YouTube and subscribe. It's a huge help. Yes, please. We're at 437 um, subscribers right now. We've got guests lined up. We've got a couple of deals we're trying to work out right now. We've got um, something special planned for the 500th episode, is 500 subscriber mark as well, and we'll do something for the 1,000th subscriber mark. It involves a cocktail dress. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Ball gown. Ball gown. Fancy than a cocktail ends dress. with the hundredth episode. Or it's the cocktail I might, dress. Or the five hundredth subscriber. I might do it if that comes first. Which that could be in like a week or two. You may want to give yourself some more time. Right. Yeah. Um, also, if you can, if you have a little bit of money, you know, if you have, if you don't have any money to spare, feel free to 
um, get the free Audible trial, or again, like, comment, subscribe. That helps us out enormously. Mm -hmm. If you have money to spare, you could consider going to our GoFundMe, GoFundMe.com. Preferably the Patreon. And preferably the Patreon. Encycl Dash Encyclopedia or Patreon, yes. which is patreon.com slash demonology. All of those links are in the description. And then, of course, there's our other fantastic sponsor. And take it away, Baron. Very well. You're going to love this. Everyone is concerned about internet security these days, from governments to major corporations. Even the average internet user should be concerned about who's seeing your online information and how that information can be used. NordVPN is the answer you've been looking for. A VPN is a private, virtual private network, pardon, that protects your IP address so that your online activity is protected by a military-grade encryption. The way it works is you connect to Nord's protected network and then they connect to the internet. It's a layer of protection between you and all the viruses, malware, and snoopers out there. Nord works on all devices too, not just computers, your phone, tablet, whatever, up to six devices at a time regardless of what operating system they use. Nord works with them all. Access to all the internet content you want, streaming media, websites, and social platforms, nothing is restricted on Nord, so it's an easy way to get around those pesky firewalls at work, or maybe if you live in a country that's not so internet friendly. They have easy plans starting at a month for $11.95 down to three year plans for as low as $2.75 a month. Check it out for free at NordVPN.com and you'll be glad you did. Also use our special link in the description to help us out. Which yeah. is very much a good idea. Yes. Do so. We don't add it to the ad because it's too long. <laughs> yes. But that's going to do it for tonight. Again, thank you so much. We would not have reached 50 episodes without our viewers. Exactly. And our wonderful guests. I want to, th again, thank everyone who was kind enough to join us. We love you all. You're all awesome. Um, Indeed. Virgo Triad, who's a fr frequent guest who was going to try and call in tonight, wasn't able to. Mm. Virgo, if you hear this later, thank you for your efforts. I hope everything went well. I know why she wasn't able to make it. And there's no hard feelings there. Well, that's going to do it for tonight. This is Kevin Mears saying good night and God bless. Uh, Brian McKinley, stay thirsty. Beth, live long and prosper. Amisha, meow meow. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Baron Voltage saying, thank God I didn't avoid lightning rods, otherwise I wouldn't be anywhere near as interesting. Good night, everyone. Good and night. Be with you all. And thank you, Aaron, for being one of our f frequent favorite callers. Awesome and also with You're you. Awesome.